Welcome to the General Conference Medical Missionary Department Seminar, 21st Century Medical Missionary. We hope you have watched and thoroughly enjoyed the previous presentation by Dr. John Baer entitled, Empowered Functional Medical Missionary. Christ's model of medical missionary was truly centered around the patient's deepest needs. He longed to heal humanity, mind, body, and spirit. And he did so with the utmost compassion, long-suffering, and wisdom. In his approach to suffering humanity was found the perfect balance of mercy and justice. And when infused from his heart of love, people thronged to be around him and yearned to be in his presence where they found true peace and joy. Sadly, modern medicine often skims over the surface and tries to apply a temporary band-aid to silence the symptoms which are the body's cry for help until these symptoms result in pathologic disease. As true medical missionaries, we should strive to be well-versed in knowing the structure and function of our body organs and know the simple signs or symptoms that our body may use as an alarm. This takes a deeper understanding of how the human body was created and meant to function and for this reason, I am excited to listen to more of our presenters throughout this seminar. But first, let us take a moment to gladden our hearts with the following melody, Yield Not to Temptation.
prepare our hearts for our next presentation, let us bow our heads in prayer with Brother Gabriel Sherban. Dear Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We come before you this evening to thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing for us. We thank you for health, for life, for food, and also for sending your Son to pay the price for our sins and freeing us from the bondage of Satan. We thank you for these health presentations that you blessed us with this weekend, and we also thank you for being willing to heal us completely, mind, soul, and body, and we ask you to bless us with your Holy Spirit once again as we are listening to this presentation, that we might have wisdom to understand the message presented and give us the willingness and the strength to implement these teachings into our life that we might prepare ourselves for your soon coming. We pray for the speaker. We pray for every viewer across North America and around the world. Bless each one of them and their families and help us to grow more and more into your character, that when you come back on the clouds of heaven to recognize in each one of us a son and a daughter for your kingdom. We thank you for listening and answering our prayers, and we ask these things with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our next presentation will be by Dr. Emil Barbu, a practicing surgeon and active member of the General Conference Medical Department. We thank the Lord for His grace in giving us the opportunity to study a very important subject, specifically how can a medical service provider such as a nurse or nurse assistant uh, or a medical doctor be at the same time a medical missionary? How can we serve or provide spiritual assistance to the people as medical missionaries in a medical environment? The question that should be addressed is how can we present from the practical perspective what a medical missionary uh, will look like and what a medical missionary can do. It is very interesting that currently scientists have begun to explore a domain little known to the scientific world until the last 10-15 years. What is that very something that can trigger the process of certain good genes to be expressed and bad genes to be suppressed. We uh, try to give a name to this scientific field that is in fact something above genetics, so they come up with a name epigenetics. One of these epigenetic factors that stood out beside our way of eating or the way we manage the stress factor in various circumstances, beside our regular exercise habits, or beside or finding or not pleasure in our daily duties uh, or regardless of the fact that we find pleasure in these activities the relationship we have with the people around us or the manner we interact with the people will trigger eventually the good genes to express themselves or to the contrary if we are part of social network or a group of so-called friends that are not necessary people that may inspire us in kindness love altruism or any positive thinking they may influence us in such a manner to stimulate certain genes from uh, our body to be expressed. Thus, social network or those people that are uh, we come in contact with are very important factors regarding our proper development of the health of the people around us. So, how much more can a medical doctor or nurse that provides medical services can influence every single patient with the attitude expressed towards their patience. I would like to open the scripture and read a very important statement from Psalm 84, verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who, passing through the valley of Baca, make it in a well. The rain also fills the pools, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. 
there is a class of people or a class of medical doctors, nurses or nurse assistants that passing through the valley of Baca, when they meet sick people, can transform that place of their labor into a place full of springs in which the early rain and the later rain will cover the valley with a lot of blessings. It is very interesting that the medical missionary field extends its influence to every person that had a chance to ever know Jesus. Why? Because the gospel means nothing more than health and this health can be stimulated by a positive attitude of the mind that can influence those around them. Coming back to Psalm 84, uh, verse 7 says, they go forth strength to strength. And the previous Bible verse says, when they are passing through the valley of Baca, uh, make it a w in a well. The early rain also fills with the blessings. How can it that be possible? How can a person become a medical missionary that uh, no matter what field he is involved in, he will uh, achieve this goal? The very first principle the medical doctor, nurse, or nutritionist must understand is the principle that is extremely practical that uh, should be reflected in the life uh, of the attitude and the attitude that uh, they have in regard to the patients. The reflection of such an idea can be found in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse um, 26, and it says, If thou wilt diligently hearken the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in the sight uh, of God, and will give uh, ear to his commandments and keep his all statutes will not put uh, of these uh, disease upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians because I am the Lord that heals thee this specific expression is this extraordinary truth I am the Lord that heals you will remind any medical doctor that he does not have power to heal anyone uh, or the nurse also does not have power to heal anyone neither does the nursing assistant uh, uh, has uh, is powerless in healing everyone that works in the medical field is just an instrument in the hand of almighty god the only one that does the work of healing a person that is not healed cannot deliver healing to anyone how can a doctor transmit health or a state of well-being to a patient it is very interesting that the patient looks to the facial expression of for the doctor or if the doctor's demeanor uh, displays a sad face or they may notice that we are lost in our thoughts the patient uh, will connect these to this case asking himself is this demeanor related to my health condition but when the doctor uh, visits the patient and he smiles and shows um, confidence uh, that will be healing to the patient without uh, it being necessary to offer the patient another service the compassion the mercy the love the empathy towards the sick patient all these are part of the heavenly atmosphere that records uh, the doctor uh, as being a person that has been connected with Jesus. In fact, uh, no matter how much practical or theoretical knowledge a person may have acquired, it can be useful only in the proportion to his exposure and dedication to Christ Jesus every day, basically. I would like to follow a specific uh, interesting example specified in John chapter 4 verse 7 there came a woman of Samaria to draw water Jesus said unto her give me to drink uh, oftentimes I ask myself why did the creator of the universe have to ask for water he as the creator of all the water in the world what he could have done something to make sure he had water correct. There is a statement in the book uh, called Desire of Ages where the author explained that the majesty of heaven 
humbled himself to such a degree to ask to help a woman for something in order to give something. He desire, his desire was to share with this woman a very necessary gift that would help healing her mind and to enable her to become a medical service provider to assist the minds of people in her city that were suffering from the similar infirmities as hers, even though she was suffering from a form of depression and affected by certain things that affected her past and the present life as well. She was really surprised by the request of Jesus saying, How is to that being a Jew ask the drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? Jesus answered unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is the one who said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. It is true that uh, people need physical medical assistance. Oftentimes, they need direct, direct intervention from medical doctors. For example, if we talk about surgical intervention, uh, or have a patient with an open wound, he needs to be uh, shattered. But if beside the intervention, the doctor can add to this medical service a little bit of empathy while consi uh, considering what was the cause that had generated that open wound at his hand, uh, for instance, if a person is an alcoholic and he became alcoholic due to a certain problems in his family, etc., if while offering medical services, the doctor can win a certain level of trust to share with the patient <clears throat> something about the marvelous power of Jesus Christ to change the mind, then the patient, the person, will benefit not only from the medical services offered to uh, to the needs of the body, but will, ser uh, will receive a service for the needs of his mind that will gradually change by the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result, he will give up his uh, he will give up his drinking habit, and consequently. Um, will not repeat the unpleasant and traumatizing experiences. This type of medical services can blend with a missionary service, um, can help in the process of mind changing of that person. This type of service was done by our Savior, Jesus, while uh, walking amongst men. In fact, uh, the great healer Jesus was always combining the services offered for the needs of the body and the needs of the mind, which can be translated in the needs of the soul. This is what impressed me the most. The fact that the Lord Jesus Christ will take interest in healing of the person, not only physically or bodily, but to the reach of his, to reach his heart, his mind, to heal him and to produce a transformation of his heart. This is happened every time Jesus will offer his services to the people. Jesus answered unto her, But uh, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water uh, springing up into everlasting life. John 4.14 4. It is not only object of Jesus to satisfy the physical thirst of people at a certain moment. The emphasis fell on the words, Shall be in him a well of water springing into everlasting uh, lasting life. I had this type of experience working in a uh, then uh, sanatorium in Breza. I met people that I had uh, had different types of unhealthy habits that obviously generated different physical and mental illnesses. Discovering the connection in between the habits and the uh, operation of disease, people were extremely impressed and touched, uh, leading them to to change the, uh, those unhealthy habits, not only in their personal life, but they were willing to share these wasses of knowledge with the family members in their neighbors. I had a patient in our institution, a gentleman uh, was coincidentally or providentially from my city, and he spent a 14-day session in our sanatorium. After these 14 days, he came to let me know, you know, I'm working in that local, at that local television station, and I was wondering, would you have some spare of time to come for a talk show and tell the people of these important factors, such as words, attitudes, habits, can, and how they can directly influence their health? 
This is an example that proves that any time people met Jesus and experienced the healing of Jesus, they are compelled to share their own experience with the people around them. This phenomena is so interesting, I would personally prefer to call it medical missionary work. The Lord Jesus Christ, when was walking amongst crowds, and that uh, is stipulated in Matthew 14, 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. If this word compassion will characterize the deportment of those who offer medical services and will treat people with compassion, having mercy on them, and not treating them as a simple object, this very compassion will help the healing of the patient. Good genes will be activated in the patient's genome and will assist to the healing of uh, their body and their mind. There is a very interesting book written by Devin Hamilton, How Your Mind Can Heal Your Body. Uh, there, uh, the author presents a study that was ongoing for some time. Uh, where especially amongst the young couples, some of them were having a rough time living in an atmosphere of arguments, while others uh, lived in harmony, love, and mutual respect. The husbands uh, living in harmony with their wives by experiencing compassion and mercy activated good genes from their genome factor that would speed the healing time of their disease. A simple flu can be healed faster when in the home there is a harmony, empathy, love, etc. The Lord Jesus Christ in verse 13 says, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touch were made perfectly whole. Many times the patients do not need a physical treatment per se. Let me explain why. I recall a case of a patient who I treated for diabetes that had affected one of his legs. As most people know, it is very difficult to heal a foot of a patient affected by diabetes. Everyone has a different set of pathologies at the peripheric part of their bodies. Uh, such an uh, orthopedic uh, uh, neuropathy and due to these problems often the patient will such conditions will have an open draining wounds in certain circumstances the result will be the amputation of certain segments of the part of the body these extreme measures are done to help the patient uh, to heal uh, the affected areas this uh, patient was treated in the very hospital where I work, and it uh, so it happened that one day, uh, it was uh, my time to do the visitation at the beds of the people. When I came in the, his room, I was impressed by a profound feeling of compassion for his condition, because he was too young to have such a problem. I entered into a simple dialogue with him. It is very interesting that even today, often, uh, after so much time, this patient comes to see me when I'm working and he says, how are you doing, Mr. Doctor? Would you be so kind to examine my foot once again? Many times I helped him at the present time. He's healed. Even his leg is healed. I asked him, uh, why do you continue to come to see me when you know that your foot is healed? Sir Doctor, I felt that after your visit in my room in the hospital, my leg began to heal. You inspired me with so much trust. I. I must mention that uh, he was not my patient in the hospital. It uh, it's just uh, happened I was there at a time of my shift for any situation I had to help him. It was amazing uh, to see what uh, empathy, mercy, and gentleness can do for the people that are suffering. And uh, changes uh, the minds of the patients and make him have confidence and finally be healed. 
people can feel that uh, atmosphere. Patients can feel the atmosphere surrounding the doctors, nurses, the assistant nutritionists. The patients uh, feel either the positivity or toxicity of that environment. The fundamental question is, where do we get this uh, atmosphere of grace? Well, the answer is in the scripture. Let us go back to the book of John. In uh, John chapter 4, verse 28. The woman uh, that uh, then left her water pot and went uh, her way into the city and said unto the men, Come and see, man, which told me all things that ever I did. It is not this the Christ. It is amazing how uh, the changed mind of a woman influenced the people of the city. That powerful mind change attracted the, them to Jesus like a magnet. Where did this strong attraction came from? Obviously, was coming from Jesus Christ. There is a statement in the excellent book, Steps to Christ, page 68, ver paragraph 1, where it is written the following. In the matchless gift of his Son, God has encircled the whole world with an atmosphere of grace as real as the air which circulates around the globe. So, the same atmosphere that surrounds humanity when Jesus came on earth was uh, as real as the air we breathe. Every one of us that chooses the breath, this life-giving atmosphere, will live and grow into complete man in Christ Jesus Christ. I would like to ask this, um, though, what is, what is the meaning of such an expression? What does it mean to grow into a complete man in Christ Jesus? What is the connotation of such an expression? I have found something very interesting in a, a spiritual prophecy. There is a work for those in the higher as well, in the more humble positions individually, all need a hard work, a good work, cannot be done by the human argument alone for the full development of and efficiency of the intellectual as well as the spiritual powers there is there must be a vital connection with god a communion with the highest source of activity then with the soul all gl aglow with zeal for the master, we can be a blessing to others. Councils of Hell, page 507, paragraph 1. We ourselves cannot provide medical missionary services. We cannot. We are not to uh, the source of such gifts uh, or qualities uh, on our own. Love, compassion, the understanding cannot come from us. In Christ the object's lesson, the human agent is described as having a cold heart, dark and without love. Disconnected from divinity, we cannot offer empathy and love and compassion. Our only hope uh, to become more human as we uh, were designed by creation is to breath from this atmosphere of heaven the very atmosphere with which Jesus Christ has surrounded our world. Only then is the soul awakened to a fiery zeal for God and to be a blessing for the Lord and for those around us. Many times while I was taking my university courses, I surprised myself in those very hours, praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, let this information that is uh, received by my mind somewhere in the time where I will uh, need this uh, the most, please refresh my memory with this precious knowledge. Please remind me all these because there is so much information that it will not be possible for me to access uh, it because it is uh, such an ocean of information. It was, uh, I was very surprised by the fact that in the process of studying the spirit of prophecy, to discover this tremendous idea, extraordinary idea, to those who with steadfast perseverance strive to reveal the attributes of Christ, angel are commissioned to give enlarged views of his character and work, his power and grace and love. 
Where does the efficiency of our medical missionary service come from? Who helps us in this process of applying the certain remedies in such a manner for the patient to be healed? Where all these things come from? Who can help us? Who can help us to apply per certain remedies to help the those who withstand fast with perseverance uh, strive to reveal the attributes of Christ? The angels are commissioned to give enlarged views of his character and work. The angels of the Lord are mandated to offer us detailed images, uh, images uh, uh, regarding this, his power and grace and love. Thus they become partakers of his nature and day by day grow up to the full stature of men and women in Christ. The sanctification of the Spirit is seen in... In, the, uh, in thought, word, and deed. Their ministry is life and salvation to all with whom they associate. Ye are complete in Him. I remember being in Africa in 2011 at one of my first medical missionary projects, being with a lot of friends uh, that volunteer from all over the world, I remember very well that uh, we had uh, powdered milk for the babies, but we were missing the nipples of the bottles. I was with a friend of mine uh, who was assisting me, and I recommended uh, to him, Hey, my friend, let us pray. At the beginning, he was hesitant and uh, whispered to me, Well, uh, we will pray, but uh, how will God provide nipples for the babies? As if something would uh, fall down from heaven, you know. We do not have nipples and that is uh, the reality. And uh, I began to pray to the Lord saying, Lord, please help me uh, to find nipples for the babies. But at the same time, I pray for the help to increase uh, my faith and the faith of my friend in you. And I remember very well right uh, that after I finished my prayer that the Lord gave me a idea. Looking to a jar lead, I said to myself, I can screw a hole in it and I can cut uh, disinfecting gloves uh, and use it as a nipple. Uh, so by doing this, we can have already a couple, a complete kit for the baby bottle with a nipple uh, and powder milk. I kneel down before the Lord and I thank Him for His wisdom. I have learned that we uh, may have all the equipment for the medical services, but we will never know how to prove uh, uh, properly use them without divine inspiration. And when I have to say endorse this by word, the angels are commissioned to give enlarged views of His character and the work, uh, His power and grace uh, and love. Thus, uh, they become partakers of his nature and day by day grow up to the full stature of men in Christ. This work of Jesus was done without keeping count or rank or race, etc. Or if it was about our brother and sisters uh, and so on and so forth. So my question is, what did Christ's work consist of? Because there was written that the angels are commissioned to give an enlarged views of his character and his work. In which, what sense is the detailed work? of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ mingled with people as one that wanted to the best for them and really care for their well-being. He proved his sympathy towards them. He took care of their needs and won their confidence, their trust. After that, he told them, follow me. This is the very work we should do, each one of us. And this is the work of God for us. In fact, uh, this is a detailed work of Jesus. He joined with humanity as one. He wanted the best for the people. He took care of their needs and won their confidence. And after that, he told them, follow me. As a conclusion of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in healing humanity, did have a specific order. 
first was uh, uh, interested in the healing of the mind, afterwards the healing of the body, because the mind is uh, that what generates the sickness of the body primarily. So was he addressing the cause first in order to eliminate the effect? This type of work can be defined in one word, the gospel. We as co-workers with the Lord Jesus Christ should follow his example, presenting to the people Jesus Christ. Our workers should present before those who due to their sickness, infirmities, and other inabilities are continually oppressed by pain and discouragements. The great healer, the greatest doctors of all times was Jesus Christ. While I was working in the hospital, I had a situation where the patient completely lost any hope of being healed. One of them, absolutely overwhelmed by discouragement, will tell me, I'm going to die. Yes, definitely, me, I'm going to die. And every time he would say that, I would contra counteract saying, would you, will, you will not die. You will not die. There is someone that can heal you. Have you ever prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever said, Lord, please heal me? Uh, we all, as medical missionary workers, have the duty to guide, to rectify the trajectory of their minds from darkness and discouragement to light, hope, and to Jesus Christ, who is more than able to heal our, uh, our physical and spiritual infirmities. I repeat that. This is m uh, myself again and again. This is our duty as medical min uh, missionary workers to reorient the minds of the people towards God and Heavenly Father. Maybe in the beginning will be s they will say without using words, but a simple smile, a small gesture of attention, our empathy, our love, our kindness, somehow without words, to compel the patients without words necessary to look upward to the one that can heal their spiritual and physical maladies. Tell them the story of the one that uh, is moved with compassion for our pain and suffering. Encourage them to commit their life in the hands of the one that can offer more than 60 or 70 or 100 years in this world. It is too short. He can offer eternal life. Tell them about uh, their beauty of Christ's character. This is the manner of telling that the patients about Jesus is part of their healing process. The, patients, uh, the patient needs to believe, to trust in order to be healed. And this faith cannot occur or be born without hearing the word of God. It is written so, then faith comes by the hearing, and the hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Making the patient to stop looking to his problem, his pain, his suffering, and instead of uh, or reorient, reorient his sight towards Christ will eventually trigger a faster healing process would be desirable that all of the gospel workers should enrich their knowledge in assisting in the physical needs of the individuals through simple natural methods to be able to ease, ease the suffering and the healing of the people. We should uh, have that uh, basic foundation of knowledge uh, to be capable to apply simple treatments towards the patients that are confronted with different uh, situations. While coming close to the conclusion of our subject, I would like to relate a story from the Gospel of John in which the Lord Jesus Christ was confronted with a question. Some of the disciples asked him the following, and his disciples asked him, say, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? John 9, 2. And the Lord Jesus Christ seems to ignore the question for a while. Oftentimes, medical service providers are somehow tempted to judge uh, to, ch to judge the patients. Uh, why, why did this man get sick of cancer? Uh, why uh, this man is sick of diabetes? Uh, some may say because they did uh, not have a healthy lifestyle or a dietary style. But when the people come to you with unfortunate medical condition, we should not judge them. If we look to the Lord Jesus Christ in his early life, he never did such a thing as judging people. The reason of his presence of our world was not to judge people, but the contrary, to save them. Jesus Christ is set before us as a great model of medical missionaries. Yeah, he is the true, uh, real model of medical missionary worker, an example to be followed by everyone. 
His pure and holy love was blessing everyone that will come under his influence. His character was the very definition of perfection without any spot or wrinkle of sin. He came as a perfect model displaying the divine love of God, not to destroy or judge or condemn, but to heal and weak, uh, char- the weak, any weak character that may have a lot of defects, to save men and women from the power of the enemy. Once again, I have to mention that the missionary, um, the mission of the medical service provider is not to judge or condemn the patient, but to be a channel of blessing coming to God uh, towards one that is uh, uh, in a state of suffering and infirmity. That was the very attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, uh, this is what the, the way that he acted towards the people. This is the attitude he has taken when the question was, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents uh, that was that was more blind? Jesus answered, neither he that uh, man sin nor his parents, but uh, that the work of God should be made manifest in him. It was very impressed by the, I was very impressed by the means used by the Lord Jesus Christ in the healing process. For every patient and for healing of every one of them, the Lord Jesus Christ used different methods. He left behind our training, uh, what do we need to do for helping the people in the healing process. There are a variety of treatments. There are treatments uh, based on surgical interventions, treatments with different antibiotics. There are treatments based on dietary changes. There are therapies to help us to change the way we think. There are therapies in which uh, the music has a healing property. Um, There are treatments oriented towards increase of physical activities or often treatment Uh, though physical labor people that change the sedentary lifestyle for an activity uh, and dynamics of a a, a full um, strength of life uh, are working physically outside for instance in nature may have a real chance to heal this is the this is called uh, ergotherapy as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, says. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the uh, spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went in uh, his way, therefore he washed and came, saying, I am asking you, how did uh, he come back? He returns seeing perfectly. Who in fact healed the sick? You may incline to say, well, the clay and the saliva have healed him. Or maybe the water from the pool. Do you remember that in the beginning of this subject, we have considered a verse from Exodus chapter 15, last part, where we have declared uh, from this side uh, of the Lord. um, The rhetorical question, the following, who heals the sick? The surgeon? I have an opportunity to see two patients with almost identical pathology operated by a very good surgeon at a university professor in Paris. The result was shocking. One died, one managed to survive. Who heals the sick in reality? Medical services provider did all his services, but is him that he healed the sick? Is the Lord Jesus Christ the one that heals the sick? Through this means of the Lord Jesus Christ, he, had, he has taught us to use any means we have available and had to save a life because in en- many instances, the human element does not like to leave his hurt comfort zone to stretch the hand and help patient. Reasons such as I don't have anything available to assist, I can't uh, not be a medical missionary, or I cannot provide medical services because I don't uh, necessarily mean that is that is why I cannot help. But if we are willing to help with whatsoever we have at hand, the Lord Jesus Christ will assist the healing of the patients because He is the healer. Jesus is the healing. Uh, um, either uh, through the surgical knife in the hand of a university professor or a cataplasm of clay applied by a nurse assistant. Evidently, in the context of using all the medical knowledge, God has shared with us to be available. That means that there must be a reasoning in the process of applying the simple remedies. 
These medical missionary channels should act as an intelligent and wise manner, but we should not forget that even the intelligent originates uh, fr intelligence originates from God. In the same manner, we can observe the change of our character and our spiritual life in general. So, in conclusion, if we are willing to assist the patients with what we may have available, the patients will be healed, but not healed by us, because we do not heal, but we will be healed by the Lord Jesus Christ and used as instruments in His hands. Obviously, uh, this event triggered a very heated conversation regarding the legitimacy of Christ, um, uh, Christ's way of healing. The dignity of the Pharisees that thought that are entitled to release permits of healing was very affected. Their prejudice against Christ uh, went so far that they attributed the power of Jesus used in the healing of the blind as having strange origins since the miracle was made in the Sabbath day. In conclusion, in this subject, I would like to say that what we will eventually motivate people to reform their life will be the coherency in between what a medical missionary will say and do in his practice. Beside that, a permanent example of self-control will be vital for motivating the patients to follow a pattern of reform in their lifestyle. Imagine that if the patients will know our lifestyle, hypothetically speaking, they will observe that there are discrepancies in between what we say and what we do regarding our professional conduct as medical missionary provider. Inspired Word said that by practicing the principle we profess or promote to our patients, our any or other any individual will empower these principles with importance and weight. The world needs to see practical and vivid uh, examples of what the grace of God can do in their life to re-establish the lost dominion of resurrected self-control. There is no greater convincing power that speaks to the world in favor of the transforming power of the gospel, that vivid example of a Christ-likeness in us. We should daily develop a grow our relationship with the Lord Jesus every day. I recall one of my first experiences when I went in France. It was late in the evening and I was coming from the church and suddenly I had a moment of incertitude. I gradually gave in to an imaginary situation allowing my thinking to develop a hypothetical scenario where supposedly my car uh, that is uh, otherwise very good but uh, at a certain point, I may get uh, a flat tire. I believe that my car works well, but uh, in one instance, I can have a flat tire. What am I going to do? And if I have a flat tire, I will get stuck here because uh, I'm not speaking French. What am I going to do? I have an insurance, but I don't know even how to use it uh, in France. And what uh, what I will do? And while I was struggling with these thoughts, I remember that I have a friend that is so is called Jesus Christ. Suddenly, I was impressed uh, to pray, even though I was uh, on the highway, heavy traffic. But I allow my heart to reach out to God, saying, "Lord." Uh, you know that I am stressed. I uh, know you can do all things to me. You can take away my stress. Uh, and all of a sudden, my cell phone began to vibrate. A friend of mine, uh, living in Paris uh, for many years, uh, speaking with me in my mother tongue, saying, Hey, Emil, how are you? God bless you, man. I'm so happy that you came in France. I call you to let you know that I have a repair, auto repair shop, and I just call to let you know that if you ever have a problem with your car, I uh, do have a platform for operating as a AAA fashion, you know, as we have in America, and I can fix your car and rescue you out of any situation. Uh, I barely utter a few words and ask him where he lives, and uh, he replied in such and such a place, and I just look uh, over my map and turn on my head, and I write on, uh, on the right side, I noticed the, that exactly moment I was passing by his town. I was so impressed by this uh, divine intervention, and I decided to pull over to take time to thank the Lord Jesus for such a glorious lesson. With one single phone call, God has vanished all my troubles. Similar 
miracles have repeated many times in my life. When I was in a full-scale sol- surgery uh, and impossible situations, and I had a case, uh, I would kneel and pray, Lord, I don't know what to do, but you know, please help me, guide me, give me solutions for the situation I am in. When we are willing to surrender our life, our expertise, our experience in His mighty hand, He will intervene and us He will heal. When we are willing to surrender our life and our expertise, our experience in His mighty hand, He will intervene and hear us. He will heal and give salvation and many souls will be saved. May the Lord Jesus help us to grow in our daily experience in His grace and allow ourselves to become channels of love, mercy, into the benefit of the people that are suffering. In closing, let us join our hearts in worship through this song of praise. in prayer. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace in full recognition of our sinful nature. 
we fully recognize that we have inherited defective genes and characters and we are dependent upon you and your grace and mercy to be mingled with justice that the sins of our past and the sins of our life may be erased and healed. Father, we thank you for the message of hope. We thank you for the message of healing that you have entrusted your people in these last days. Lord, I pray that you may awaken us from our slumber. I pray that we may search for wisdom as for precious jewels. And I pray that we may adorn our hearts with wisdom and understanding and knowledge, that our lips may be seasoned with grace, and from us may flow rivers and streams of life that may infuse our community and this entire world. And Lord, that we may have the privilege to hasten your soon coming is our wish and our prayer, not because we are worthy, but in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining the General Conference Medical Missionary Department Seminar, 21st Century Medical Missionary. You are warmly invited to stay tuned for the General Conference Family Department Seminar, which will air on the third weekend in July. Until then, we pray that you may prosper in faith and in health. God bless.